Okay, so this is gonna be a new thing for me. Uh, I want to talk about philosophy. Now, this is weird, because, like, I always thought that this channel was gonna be about philosophy through hentai, but now I kind of feel like just talking about philosophy. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm, I just woke up, and it feels like waking up is probably the best way to talk about philosophy. I don't know why that is. But yeah, uh, I want to take things uh, very simple for now, and I want to talk about Plato's uh, perspective on reality and how he views the world, or how we human beings view the world, at least according to him. Now, uh, according to Plato, uh, the world, well, at least philosophy, his idea of philosophy is that philosophy uh, targets reason, and uh, there's this idea that uh, the reason we human beings are different from animals is our ability to reason. And that's why we are what we see today. We are human beings. We, we exist, basically, because we are being uh, an, uh, being, I guess. <laughs> this is so, uh, difficult to explain. But basically, because we're here, that all of these things exist. And the reason why these things exist is because of these two perspectives that Plato would introduce to us. So, in order for me to explain it in a very uh, simple manner, I'm going to show you this picture. So, what is this? Just tell me, what is this? So, if you say chair, then you're right. If you do not say chair, then you're also right. So... Why I say that is because Plato has this idea that there are two ways of interpreting some, something. There are two worlds, in his words. So, there is the word of, uh, world of ideals and the world of, well, real. The real world. So, in the world of ideals, this is the world in which uh, we human beings interpret something that is in front of us or that has been uh, recollected through ancestry, or it has been gained through knowledge, or there are many ways to collect the, this idea, this ideal, w while the uh, the world of the real, or the real world, is what is in front of us, what our eyes are seeing. Now, when we interpret something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the only interpretation. Now, we, uh, that's what we always talk about in our class in uh, literary criticism, but this goes to all of, all subjects actually, all topics. So what I mean to say about this is that um, the world of the real do not necessarily intersect with the world of ideals. Now, how do I explain this? So first of all, you see this chair, right? Why do you call it the chair? Why can you not call it the table? Why can you not call it a coat rack thing? I, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, why don't you just call it something other than the chair? Have you ever questioned that? Why is it called the chair to begin with? Now, there are plenty of factors. One of them would be the function. Uh, one of them would be uh, the linguistic properties. But the fact still stands that the only people who would probably call this a chair are human beings because they came up with the idea that this is a chair and thus it cannot be something else. If it is something else, it goes against the world of the ideals. However, when you talk about the real world, this chair might not even be a chair. It could be a table, it can be a coat rack, uh, depending on again the function. But again, the function can also differ depending on the person. And just because something is called chair doesn't necessarily mean the whole universe will think it is a chair. Uh, uh, it might get a little confusing right now, but let me explain it. So, uh, the real world says that this is just a thing. Uh, this is just a thing that does not exist. It only exists with the mind of a human. If I take away the picture and I say the word chair, automatically your mind will think of a chair. 
But if I put on a picture that is something that is not a chair, like this one, I guess, and you would not say it's a chair, but the real world doesn't necessarily think it's not a chair. Because again, chair is a concept. And that's the difference. So the world of ideals are concepts that humans make to make sense of the world. While the real world is simply just something that exists. Without a concept, it doesn't have any meaning. And if, for example, if we do not make an idea or we do not make a concept for that thing in the real world, then it would not come up in the world of ideals, if that makes sense. So Plato explains uh, th this as his truth. So there's uh, uh, these two things are truth. This is his explanation of truth, that there is two worlds. And that this is where his uh, paradox comes in. So he also said that truth resides in the mind. So everything that we perceive would be true if it were in the mind. If in this case, the mind would be the word world of ideals or the ideal world. The world where, you know, we conceptualize everything. So... <clears throat> I have been talking for so long. I never really talked like this for so long. So anyway, now that we know the difference between the ideal world and the world of reality, then which one is the real world? How do we know that this thing that we are seeing is the real world? There is a car moving. Ooh. Why am I not cutting this? Because I don't know. Anyway, we're talking about uh, how we perceive uh, the world, right? So, again, the world of ideals and the real world. So, is there a way to perceive the world as it is uh, with just one of these uh, perspectives? Can you perceive the world with just a world of ideals? Or can you just perceive the world with the world of real? Now, a good example of this... Uh, Maybe a good explanation of how these two would uh, intertwine and not really make, uh, not really combine, and it just kind of stays separate. At least for Plato, in Plato's perspective, I'm gonna talk about Aristotle maybe next time. But for now, let's talk about Plato. So, a good example of this would be the man in the cave. So you've read this one. It's I think it was Socrates who introduced this. Uh, I I don't remember, but basically. It's this story where uh, this uh, this human, or I guess a, a group of humans, uh, ever since their entire their entire life, they have been just focused on this one on this uh, one rock, I guess. And in that rock, there are shadows, and those shadows are what they perceive as reality. There is no um, I there's no concept yet that. Uh, this is a shadow. No, because they have lived their entire lives in that cave looking only at that shadow. Now, what if we take that shadow away and then, uh, we take that shadow away, basically. If we take that shadow away and he loses, uh, his grasp on what he thinks is real. So his world of ideals is being crashed, but the real world is still there. There is just no concept for him or for this group to explain how this uh, reality works now. So, when they finally, uh, when they see an exit to that cave, now, uh, uh, this is another question. Would you, uh, would you approach that cave, the exit of the cave, or would you stay in that reality? But that's another, uh, that's another uh, dilemma for next time. But for now, we're gonna talk about reality. So. If, for example, that man uh, leaves the cave and he sees uh, this brand new reality, how would that person perceive it? Because basically, you're, it's like your whole world just suddenly changed and you don't even know how to interpret it. Interpret it. I don't know why I say that. But uh, uh, if you were in that position, how would you interpret it? If you were to... Uh, if this world, for example, this life of yours is simply a simulation or it's not even real, if you're in a VR, 
how would you know you're in a VR and how would you know that this is a real world? That's kind of the dilemma that we're having here. So how do you know that the world you're living in is the real world and not the world of ideals? So I, this actually moves to another topics topic in this uh, discussion, which is simulation simulacra, but uh, my voice is kind of tired now. <laughs> So yeah, we're, I, I, I just wanted to rant a little bit and uh, I just, yeah. So yeah, this is pretty much what goes into my mind all the time and I had no outlet for it. And I thought since I had a YouTube channel and I've just been talking about hentai, this might be a change, you know? I might, I might talk about philosophy because I like philosophy and such. So yeah, uh, that that's it. Uh, I hope you guys like it. I know it's really boring, but you know, I just want to share these things. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Guess <laughs> if you did, leave a like and subscribe down there for more videos like this. As always, this is vanilla, not the flavor, which is sweet.